to ask the Scottish Government what its response is to the reported comments made by the Children and Young People's Commissioner Scotland that the Scottish Government has absolutely failed to deliver for children. Cabinet Secretary Jenny Gilruth. Presiding officer, I thank Bruce Adamson for all that he has done as Children and Young People's Commissioner, but I do not recognise the picture he paints. This is a government which introduced the game-changing Scottish child payment to tackle child poverty. We are delivering 1,140 hours of funded early learning and childcare to all three and four-year-olds and eligible two-year-olds. We have introduced free bus travel for all under 22s, and we have the most generous provision of free school meal entitlement in any other part of the UK. We are doing, doing all of this, presiding officer, as a devolved government within a fixed budget, and despite that, we will continue to make real progress in delivering for our children in what have been and continue to be very challenging times. Pam Duncan Glancy. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. The Children's Commissioner is hugely respected and has long shown his personal and professional commitment to children's and young people's rights, and for that, I'd like to thank him today. He is fundamentally correct in saying the SNP government has failed on its promises to children and young people. They have failed on the attainment gap, on free bikes, child poverty, counselling in schools, free school meals, and the list goes on. So does the Cabinet Secretary accept that it is time for the government to stop patting itself on the back and actually start working to improve the lives of children and young people in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. I thank Pam Duncan Glancy for her uh, response. I too have great respect for Bruce Adamson. In fact, I sat actually on the appointment panel for his appointment back in 2017 when I was a, a backbencher. Now, the member will appreciate I've been in post for six weeks, I think now. However, I would certainly welcome an opportunity to discuss these matters with the outgoing Children's Commissioner, who I understand will demit office from tomorrow. I've asked uh, to meet with him on the points that he has raised in the press, um, because fundamentally, the role of the Children's Commissioner is about improving the lives of our young people, and I very much look forward to working constructively with the new Children's Commissioner, Nicola Colleen, when she takes up post uh, later this year. Um, I have to refute some of the suggestions that uh, Ms Duncan Glancy has made this, uh, this afternoon, presiding officer. But I also think it's important that we have context in this debate, because um, the latest poverty statistics, for example, published in March, show that Scottish child poverty rates remain 6% lower than in other parts of the UK, so 24% compared to 30% in 29-22, 31% in England, 28% in Wales, and 22% in Northern Ireland, respectively. Those statistics alone cover the period in which the pandemic was having a significant economic impact, but they also show the devastating impact of the UK government's decade of austerity and its welfare cuts for many Scottish yeah. Families. I think I heard um, a member from the Conservatives bench say, for heaven's sake. Now, I was listening very intently, actually, to the Children's Commissioner in his interview Briefly, on Cabinet Secretary, please. And he mentioned, of course, Philip Alston, the UN's Commissioner, talking about political choices. It was, of course, the UN Special Rapporteur that spoke about the limits of devolution in relation to mitigating yeah. Westminster austerity. Yeah. Here, here. Pam Duncan Glancy. But indeed, context does matter. And whilst the Cabinet Secretary has been in post for six weeks, we've had an SNP government here for 16 years. The, the Commissioner has clearly struck a nerve in his human rights defending. So would the Cabinet Secretary agree that avoiding responsibility for his own shortcomings is why this government has delayed the UNCRC and refused immediate commencement when the bill does come back? Because that is exactly its purpose, to ensure government is truly accountable for upholding children and young people's rights. Cabinet Secretary. Well, I hate to say to Pam Duncan Glancy, the Scottish Government and the SNP is not actually responsible for COVID, nor are we responsible for the impact of the cost of living crisis. Ms Duncan Glancy may, look to, uh, may wish to look elsewhere in relation to the challenges that have been presented to this Government in challenging both of those external factors. And actually, if you listen to what the Chosen Commissioner said, he did acknowledge there have been external factors that have placed challenge. In relation to the UNCRC, there has not been prevarication. Fixing the bill is really complicated. We need to address, of course, Supreme Court judgment. I think I go back to 2021, when this Parliament unanimously voted for that legislation. Of course, the UK Government challenged that legislation, and we respect the outcome of the Supreme Court. But it's hugely important we now go back to fix the legislation to ensure we improve the rights of children and young people. And we do so as quickly as possible. Yes, there is a responsibility on this Government, and our officials continue to engage. But, of course, there is also a responsibility on the part of the UK Government, and I hope the member would uh, respect that and acknowledge that.